Hello and welcome to this video on ANSYS Workbench Mechanical. In this video I'm going to illustrate element birth and death while using the Workbench Mechanical interface. There isn't direct support for birth and death built into this interface, so I've implemented it in a simple model using some APDL commands in commands objects. If you look at this model, you can see that I have a couple of bars. And you can see that I've built a spring holding a hole drilled in the upper bar to a hole drilled in the lower bar. Let's go look at that spring. The longitudinal spring. I've set the stiffness rather high, 10,000 newtons per millimeter, given that this thing is about 100 millimeters long. That's a high stiffness. If we go down, you can see that I've connected it. The reference, on the interior of the upper hole, and the mobile on the interior of the lower hole. I've set the behavior of the faces that are affected to deformable. Now, let's open this branch up and you can see there's a commands object. I've put in one simple APDL command. I've remembered the identity of the element making up that spring. Parameter underscore SID is going to respond to material element type and real constant for that spring element. So I'm remembering it here. When I go down to my structural model, let's check the analysis settings, and you'll see there are two load steps in here. Two load steps, I've set them to be 10 sub-steps each. I'm using a lot of defaults on here. We go down and look at the details for analysis settings. You can also see that I've set a large deflection analysis. It's going to be nonlinear. Of course, element birth and death is going to cause nonlinearity as well. Now the next thing in here, with this element birth and death, I have a pair of commands objects. The first one, Look at its details. It executes in the first load step. And the commands I put in are executed prior to the solve. So what do I do? I select the element by type, and it's the spring. Here is where I remembered what the spring was from this ID number. So down here, I select that spring. Then I kill the element. E kill comma all whatever was selected, and then before letting the software move on and solve my model, I select everything. So I select the spring, I kill it, and then I select everything so that the analysis can continue. This is in the first load step. Remember there were a total of two load steps in this analysis. Here's my second commands object, and I've set it, this had to be done manually, to execute at load step number two. So what do I do? I select the spring element again. I bring it to life with the ealive command, ealive comma all. And then I select everything so that the second solve can take place. So what happens to us? Well, we get a deformation like this. And if I animate the deformation, you'll see that the lower bar moves first, and then the spring comes to life and drags the second bar. Let's go up and look at the load that I put in. First I had a fixed support down at the far end of these bars. So that's fixed. They're cantilevered. Then I put in a remote displacement. And I brought it up smoothly through two load steps. 10 millimeters down at the end of the first, and at the end of the second load step it's down by 20. So it's building up linearly, pulling the bottom one, when the spring comes to life, it's going to drag the upper bar along with it. And of course, that second load step is when the spring comes to life. So let's watch this deformation develop. I'll animate through the ten sub-steps that I've saved in each load step, and I'll play it back over four seconds. Let's see what happens. You'll see that in the first load step, the lower bar moves, then the spring comes to life, and the second bar moves for the second half of the analysis. 
and we see it multiple times. Here's our state of stresses, and you'll see that the stresses develop in the first load step in the lower bar, and then the second load step, stresses begin to build in the upper bar because the spring comes to life. So let's watch that develop. You'll see that in the second half, the upper bar gets dragged down as well. I've looked at the force reaction on the end. If I exaggerate like this, you can see a bend in the force reaction. And that's because the second spring comes to life and I have two bars resisting the applied deflection. If I go to spring probe, and let's just look at the force in that spring. You can see that in the first load step, there's no force in the spring. And when I bring the spring to life, something important to notice is that the force in the spring builds up from zero. It has no memory of what happened while it was killed. It is in effect annealed and then gets stretched linearly once it's brought to life, starting out with no force in the spring when the E alive command is executed. There's no damping force in there. So that's the history of the force in that spring. It only builds up a load in the second load step. Let's go up now, bring this down, and once again I'll play the animation of the deformation of this structure. There it is. First the lower bar moves down, and then when the spring comes to life it's joined by movement of the upper bar. One more thing. Although the spring is killed in the first load step, you can see that the graphics makes it appear to be stretching. However, there's no force in it. I hope that you found this to be an interesting demonstration of element birth and death. Things to, are to notice are that in the first load step, I killed that spring so it would not be active. And then in a second load step, and you can see step number two, I brought it back to life so that it would give me the effects that I wanted. Tricks like this, modeling tricks, could be used for staged construction or for a variety of other purposes. Thank you for joining me.